Here's the foam in the surf. There's no visible bait. I'm reading as I'm recording this. We might get a little action. We'll up front of the pier. All the foam is normal. If a speck would eat something there, it would make a perfect circle in that foam. Perfect circle. And in this shallow water, it would probably hear a pop. I've caught speckled trout up to 27 inches. This water is about, at the most, a foot and a half deep. So as I'm reading the water, I'm looking for streamers going in the opposite direction. Little streamers would mean glass minnows, a small bait fish trying to swim against the current made by the waves. And if I see that, I would suspect that would be some larger predators around flounder, speckled trout, redfish. As I'm reading, I'm also listening to that familiar pop. I'm looking for erratic movement in the water. Something that's not normal. You see the normal flow. And I'm also checking the current. I can see the speed of the current. There is a west to east current. There's a light wind, so I know this current is not originated by the wind. So as I'm reading, if I don't see anything in five minutes, I could that tells me that it's slow here. But one pop, one circle, one erratic movement would indicate that there's some feeding going on. But as I've been recording at this time, I don't see anything but the normal, natural flow of the water. And this is my first check. I checked the, the lower depth water, which is before the first gut. Early mornings, speckled trout and other predators like to hang out in the shallow water. There's no noise, there's no people, but the bait has been pushed up by the tide and by the waves and speckled trout know this so they come and kind of wait in a stealth position and kill the prey so that's the shallow part i'll move on to the first gut As I'm walking, I'm still reading, I'm still listening, I'm still smelling. All of that's part of catching the speckled trout. Now I'm in the first gut. You're familiar with the first light. Everyone's familiar with the first light at the pier here. You see the volume of the phone is greater. The volume of the water is greater. A lots of feeding goes on here. But at this time, there's nothing for me immediately to indicate 
that there's a speckled trout around. I don't smell anything. I don't hear anything. I don't see anything. So I would sit here, or not sit here, stand here and read the water. I'll give it a few minutes, maybe five. Move on to the next gut, the next sandbar. That was one little flash. You might rewind it. I have quick eyes. You might didn't notice it. One little flash right in the middle of the gut. But that's not enough to keep keep my attention. <laughs> I just heard a pop. A small one. Could have been a sand trout. That goes in part of reading. I'm reading with my ears. I'm reading with my nose. I'm reading with my eyes. As you can look down at the foam, there's no erratic movement. There's no circles. That was one little flash. I just noticed that at the corner of my eyes. Uh, and that's why I say you got to look at definite spots, but keep your eyes wide open. Sometimes they happen in your peripheral vision. So, Although you're looking at definite spots, be aware that they could be feeding anywhere. At this time, that was one mullet jump, but I usually don't key on mullet jumping. Skipping through the water erratically, smaller finger mullet but one large mullet I don't key on one large mullet jumping the water is sandy but to me it's great water for stepping trout now although I don't see visible bait and see them feeding that doesn't mean they're not feeding in the deeper water they could be feeding on worms or other crustaceans on the bottom I would still give it a shot, a few casts to make sure. But I'm looking for definite signs. Usually if I don't smell it, I don't see it, and I don't hear it, I move on. So that's a quick tutorial on reading the water. I have more in another video when there's some action.